Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm going to continue the Magic Leap videos and we're going to be using a feature that Magic Leap released not too long ago in their latest version of the SDK and this is going to actually allow us to not only track our hands but also track key points in each of our fingers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example that I have at the very beginning of the results and then we're going to go into the code and look and see how it works. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. Alright guys, so let me start by showing you how the experience is going to look like once we run it in the ML1 device. So the video that I'm going to show you is me running the build of the project that I'm going to show you in the Magic Leap device. So let me just go ahead and open it up and you can see that I have spheres all around my fingers and the spheres are all placed in each finger including the thumb so as I move my fingers around the sphere position is all getting updated so let's go ahead and look in Unity and see how this is implemented so I'm just going to close out of this and then we can focus on the feature that I added so what I did for this video is I also updated the version of the project so this is running on Unity 2018.1.9f1 you can also find this in GitHub. I put it in the repository in GitHub and I can show you that pretty quick so that you know where to get it from. So this is going to be under github.com Delmar V and you can find it on the hand tracking example. So if I go to repositories and you can search for Magic Leap, you will find it on the Magic Leap hand tracking. So Make sure that you look at that repository because it's going to include everything that I'm going to show you in this video. So let me go ahead and close that and I'm going to focus on some of the things that I added. So you, you know from the previous examples, if you watch some of my videos, is that I have this structure for the Magic Leap videos where I have my content in a content prefab and also a rendering. So I'm following the same pattern on this one. And for this example, I added a new component which is called the Hand Tracking with Key Points Controller versus so if we go under scripts you can see that i now have two different ones so we can go under controllers and you can see that i have a hand tracking controller and also the new one which is the one for this video it's called hand tracking wiki points controller so this one is just basically hand tracking and it's just capturing gestures where this one is also it's just basically capturing the position of the key points that we designated so i'll show you how that works in a minute but like, let me show you how this is set up. So I have a game object that is called hand tracking key points controller and that has a hand tracking script because that's one of the requirements on that script. And also the script itself which is called hand tracking with key points controller. I have a status text which is basically a text box that is in the canvas. So it's under the head post canvas and then it's a text and then it's called status. So I have a reference to that and you can see if I click it, it basically shows you that. And I also have a key point prefab, which is basically just a sphere of red color. In fact, I can show you how that looks by just basically zooming out. And what I'll do is just drag it and drop the prefab so you can see how that looks like. So it's a fairly simple sphere, and you can see that I have a red material. You're more than welcome to change that. You're more than welcome to change the actual mesh. If you wanted something different to be tracked by your fingers, you can basically designate that and then associate that prefab with the script that I'm showing you. So I'm going to basically just remove that. So if you go back into the hand tracking key points controller, you can see that I have the prefab. So like I said, if you want a different prefab, go ahead and create one. Just make sure that the size of that prefab is small enough so that it'll fit in your fingers. So you can see that I have 0.02. .02. I started with a number like 0.5 and it was basically almost covering my entire hand. So just make sure that you follow that scale because you're doing that in augmented reality, so everything is in meters. So just make sure that you're cautious with those sizes. So that's basically that right there. And then the Hippo Canvas, if we go into that, I do that on every one of my videos. I have some kind of UI showing something about the feature that I'm adding. So in this UI, I actually don't have what you're seeing in here. I'm, I'm actually going to remove this. So I'm just going to say text, or we can say key points will be shown here 
And the reason why I'm using that text is because what I want, what I have, a, I have it working in a way that you can say you only want to track key points for two fingers, so you want to track key points for one finger. So these will dynamically basically get generated, and it'll tell you which key points we're tracking, and, and, and also from which hand. So you can track a key point from the right hand, and it might be the, the pinky finger, or you might want to do the right hand, the, the thumb. So just make sure that you look at, you think about what you want to track, and basically that's what's going to show in the UI. So let me just fix this spelling error. There we go. And then the other thing that I have it is the logo, because I like the, you know, keep, keep the branding, because this is sponsored by Magic Leap, so might as well include their logo in the video. So now let me just show you the script and see how it works. So I'm just going to open up the project. And, and the script is actually fairly simple. There's not a lot to it. But I'll show you how I went about creating this. So the first thing that I do is I have a require component. Just like I show you, the require component is a hand tracking component. So I'm making sure that that is required. If it hasn't been associated with the inspector, what this is going to do is basically going to add it for you. So that comes in handy because if you add, if you don't have that and you start trying to do tracking, your tracking is not going to work. So this is just making sure that you know we have all the dependencies that we need. So the other thing that I have is basically you know a class which is called hand tracking with key points controller, and I'm making this a singleton. So you have seen that I use singleton pattern. So if you're curious about how that works, you can look at my mono behavior singleton, and then basically what that does is creates a single instance of that. Then the next thing that I have is the status text, which I show you what we're going to be displaying. We're going to be displaying all the key points that we add. And then I also have a prefab that is going to be the prefab that we instantiate for, per finger that we're tracking. And when I say a finger, that could include you know your thumb and then the additional four, four fingers. Then the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to create a sphere, but I didn't want to create an instance of the sphere every time I was tracking, you know, I was tracking a finger. So what I did is I created what, what's called a cache key point. And what I'm doing in there is basically if I'm tracking, let's say I'm tracking six fingers, I'm basically going to create six different instances of a sphere, but I'm going to track which ones I'm adding by using a dictionary. So that's why I'm using this right here. It's basically going to have the key, which is going to be the finger that we're tracking and from which hand we're tracking it, and also the game object that I instantiated. So as soon as we as soon as we you know start the game, the awake method gets executed. We just make sure that we have the status text set. If we have it set, then we shouldn't get an error. If we don't have it set, then we're gonna get an error, and this is gonna be disabled. This is just common you know common standard and practices. And then the next thing that I do is I create a new basically a new object of cache key points. It's gonna start fresh. Then the other the other part of the work is in the update. So I want to make sure that my hand tracking started. So that's basically common practice. If you want to start tracking your hands, you want to make sure that you check that the hand tracking system basically started. Then the next thing that I do is I grab all the different key points that I have, you know, that I have it, that I have added to my array. So obviously the first time this executes, we're not going to have anything in the array. But as soon as this executes, I'm going to have all the different fingers that I'm tracking. So this is basically just going to get all the keys and then concatenate them into basically it's going to give you you know if we're adding if we're adding hand left and then it was the pinky then it's going to have you know hand left and then pinky and then comma then the next finger comma the next finger so that's what this is going to do then the other thing that i wanted to do is i wanted to basically add all the fingers that i'm going to be tracking so i'm doing that by creating an array so i created an array of a specific type that i created the type is it's finger key point this is my own type and it has a name and it has basically a magic leap key point. So this magic leap key points is basically part of the magic leap SDK. And the reason why I did it this way is because I only need to track one key point in this case. So I only need to track the tip of the finger. So I could use, you know, ML key point because it's going to be a single value. So what we're going to be storing in here is going to be the names, which in this case is going to be, you know, if I'm tracking, for instance, the left hand, which is happens to be this set of items in this array, then basically we're going to put the name, it's going to be hand left. Then I'm starting with the pinky or either on the left hand or right hand. And then I'm also starting to get information from the key points. So as you can see, I'm saying ML hands that left, that pinky key points at index zero, that's basically going to give me 
the the tip of my basically the tip of my pinky finger so i do the same thing with every one of the fingers so you can see i'm doing my left hand for the pinky for the ring the middle the index the thumb obviously you can extend this if you wanted to track other key points for me i think this is enough for right now but i think i, I think this will give you enough information for you to be able to track you know any part of your hand that magically magically provides you with so this is how I track the left. I'm basically creating a new object of finger key point, and then that object gets a name, and also it gets a key point. So I do that throughout basically the five fingers on my left hand, and also the five fingers on my right hand, and then I basically create an array, create an array of those. So the array is going to have basically all the fingers that I want to track, and then where the magic happens is in this method. So you can see that I'm creating an array here, but I'm also calling a method called an and update hand key point so this method is basically the one that is going to loop through each one of the fingers and then it's going to the first thing that it's going to do is going to loop through each one of the fingers so let's say that the first finger that we loop through which is going to be the pinky on my left hand so that's going to be the first finger and it's going to have basically that as the key then the value is going to be the key point so the first the first time through the array we're not going to have that cache in the dictionary so what I do is I basically do a cache key points try get value I pass in the key name and the way that the try get value works is if it finds a match for that key it's basically going to return basically it's going to return you know whether or not it's in the dictionary if it is in the dictionary we're not going to go through the if statement so that's what I'm saying I'm not here if it's not in the dictionary I'm basically going to get it out which is going to get it out through here because it's already in the dictionary and then I'm going to update the position by using the finger key point position that I pass in through the dictionary. The, the other thing that, I, that I'm doing here, let's say that we haven't cached this. We don't have any of our fingers in our dictionary just yet. So the cool thing about this implementation is that what I'm saying is, okay, if I, if I don't have that value in the dictionary, well, I need to instantiate a new sphere. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm creating a new instance of the key point prefab at the finger key point position and then I'm basically starting the basically the rotation at zero and then I'm adding that to the dictionary so this is a cache dictionary so I want to make sure that I only do it once and then once it's in the dictionary I'm basically just updated the position so that ba that's basically how this works there's not a lot of code into it but let's say that you only wanted to track you know maybe two fingers you may maybe you only want to track the pinky finger or let's be more realistic maybe you want to do the index finger and you don't want to do the other finger so all you need to do is basically comment them out you can just basically remove them so if i wanted to do that let's say that i wanted to create a drawing app which is what i'm going to be doing on the next video let's say that we only want to draw with our index finger so i only would need this fear on the index finger so this is what i would do let's say that i, I wanted to allow my left hand and my right hand so by doing this we're only going to be tracking the index finger and then basically the one on the left hand and the one on the right hand so it's only going to add a sphere to those fingers if you wanted to do all of them then you can do what i what i'm doing on this example and then basically uncomment uncomment all of them if you wanted to say you wanted to track more key points obviously you can modify my implementation and maybe add an array of key points and, and basically modify this or if you just knew that you wanted to use maybe the mid key point you can change the index of the key point that is being tracked for that finger so that's basically everything that i wanted to show you guys if you guys have any questions please let me know and also again check out github you know my github page which i'm going to be putting in the description of this video and i show you also in the beginning of this video so if you guys have any other questions, please let me know. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me on patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.